When someone badly injures you in an accident, you may be wondering how you're going to put food on your table for yourself or your kids. And in this video, I am going to show you the three things that might not just put food on the table, but they may give you lots of extra spending cash. The three tactics that I'm going to show you apply to car accident claims, slip and falls, and all other types of accident claims where someone else is at fault. First, let's look at this tactic that may result in you getting a much bigger payout. To explain, we'll use the accident where a train carrying hazardous materials derailed in Ohio. This accident released toxic fumes into the air. Some residents nearby reported illness, including trouble breathing. Rather than quickly settle with the train company, the residents should likely wait until they're finished getting their medical treatment that is related to the toxic fumes. The same is true in any car accident, slip and fall, and other personal injury case. You should wait until your treatment is finished. Only then will you know the full extent of your injury. Because once you settle your personal injury case, you can't later reopen it. It's much easier to get an insurance company to pay you for treatment that you've already had than treatment that you may need in the future. This is partly because the at-fault party's insurance company will likely hire a doctor to examine you and say that you don't need future treatment. That happens in many personal injury cases and lawsuits. Insurance companies like State Farm, Progressive, and others know exactly how to fight claims. State Farm sales last year was over $89.3 billion. That's more than the combined value of the bottom 42 countries in the planet. Insurance companies will spend whatever it takes so that they wind up paying you less money. As an example, one of the largest insurance companies in the US paid one doctor over $1.2 million in just three years as an expert witness. The doctor examined people who made claims against State Farm or their insureds. Insurance companies know which doctors are most likely to give them the opinion that they want, and they use those expert witnesses over and over. Their expert opinion usually consists of some or all of these three things. Number one, the accident didn't cause your injury. Number two, your injury is not permanent. And number three, they say you won't need future medical treatment. The insurance company knows that if the doctor gives these opinions, then a jury is more likely to award you less money for your pain and suffering and future medical bills. Next, let's look at a tactic that may greatly increase your payout. To explain, we'll use Maria's case where she slipped and fell at a hotel in Florida. As a result of the fall, Maria broke her leg. At the hospital, a doctor drilled a plate and screws into her leg to stabilize the fracture. She hired my law firm, and eventually I worked on this case with a lawyer from another law firm. Rather than just rely on Maria's past medical treatment to settle her case, we spoke with her surgeon. He said that due to the accident, she had post-traumatic arthritis. The surgeon also said she'd need a knee replacement. These two pieces of information were huge for her case, but the doctor only told us this after we paid to consult with him and asked these specific questions. We got Maria a $1.2 million settlement during her personal injury lawsuit. So if you need future medical treatment or surgery, you'll want to ask your doctor to write down the treatment that you'll need. Don't expect the doctor to voluntarily put this in your medical records. They usually won't. This next tactic has the power to potentially increase your settlement amount big time. Once you've completed your medical treatment, you're ready to settle your case. You or your lawyer needs to get all your medical bills and records. You then send them to the insurance company for the at-fault person or company. By then, you should have also gathered all the evidence to put as much blame as possible on the person or company who caused your injury. You have a few options when trying to settle your case. One option is to demand the at-fault party's insurance policy limits if your case is worth the limits. Another option that I like is to ask the insurance company to make a fair settlement offer. Tell the insurance company that you are making this demand in an attempt to avoid suing their insured. I usually prefer letting the insurance adjuster make the first offer. The insurance adjuster will try to get you to make the first demand. They'll say things like, What is the least amount of money that you'd accept to settle? It may be tempting to give them an amount, but don't. Let me give you an example of why you should get the insurance company to make the first offer. Let's say that your case is worth $100,000. But if you can't properly value your case, you may only demand $25,000. If you do this, you're giving up all chance at getting paid $100,000. Now your best chance is settling for $25,000. And if you don't think that this scenario happens often, you'd be wrong. I often ask my clients how much they think we should demand. 
and they often respond with an amount that is less than the fair settlement value of their claim. This even happens with some very smart people who are professionals. The issue is that they have no experience valuing personal injury cases. It's something that takes many years to get good at. Whatever amount you demand, the insurance adjuster will likely pay you less. They'll probably say something like, it's all the money that I can offer. Basically, if your settlement demand amount is lower than the insurance company's evaluation, you will never get top dollar. And whatever you do, please don't tell the adjuster that you just want your medical bills paid. The adjuster will put this as a critical case note in your file, and they'll never forget it, even though they're likely working on over a hundred other accident claims. They'll see this critical case note every every time they look at your case, and you'll likely get a much smaller settlement because of it. But if you really want to increase your chances at getting the biggest settlement possible, these tips aren't enough on their own. There's actually one more thing that you have to combine with them. And I found that without this, you won't have the best chance of getting the settlement that you want. And that's why you should watch this video here because it's going to take what you've learned and make it five times more powerful, maybe even 10 times.